listen. <laughs> it's a little bit weird one, but we are going with it. Oh, it's a zombie. What a surprise. Now I have a 4-4 four, four and I draw two cards. Hello everyone, it's Love here, and today we will play zombies because one of you asked for a zombie rail visit and I was kinda shocked with the result. I'll be honest guys, I didn't even thought that it can win and it absolutely destroyed Mythic. All the tier 1 decks you will see farming mono red like basically 3 points and we've done it all with the zombies and I tried my best with the build and it seems to be very working. So yeah, we are just playing with a lot of zombies. We have some interaction with Spell Pierce and Amalgam uh, for the sneaky wins when they try to sun for you or something and you just counter it and win the game and champion of the parish it has some very nice interactions with for example headless rider when you lose it uh, or any other zombie you get a new zombie and that's a combat trick that you will see used today to win the game so i think it will be pretty exciting some good gameplay today ahead of you and we can use conviction to just uh, sacrifice anything and get the token back uh, zombies have su nice synergy when they die because you know, they already did that before, so they have experience. All right, <laughs> that was some quality mythic joke. All right, guys, I hope you will enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to support the channel and you like the content. And yeah, have fun. All right, guys, going first. We only have black man on the reef, but we'll try. Like our turn one will be a little bit late, but then we just make it as a two drop and then we have nice three and four drops. So we'll see. Oh, it's invasion. It's a little bit of shame. I wanted to keep it. Still, we have pretty good follow-up. And those aren't legendaries. You can stack those. And we're against mono black. Possibly. Field of Ruin. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. Sure. So he's unloading a lot of stuff right now. Which is kinda fine. Honestly, I kinda want to go with the boat. It guarantees us attack or and that attacks on the next turn. Man, I cannot speak. <laughs> but yeah, that that gives us a lot of edge. I wish we had this on turn two. That would change a ga like game completely. They wouldn't be able to remove it, and then everything we play has haste basically. He knows what the next turn is. He's going for Filiana. Interesting. Very interesting. Alright. Very interesting strategy overall. I think it makes some sense. We will play this because it's more resistant to removal. And as you can see, both is already doing some work. And here's our land. It's still the wrong color somehow. <laughs> you could think that we cannot hit three blue in a row, but we will. So right now Liliana has way less loyalty. I think it will be champion, right? Uh, don't forget they still attack their hand and they're actually discarding sweepers already so you know that's not nothing and it also means that you know virtue is so far from being played that it should work uh, they might use field of ruin interesting interesting so they're waiting with a removal on the boat <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what is happening right now, but we will play around it because now they kind of need to react Otherwise, we are getting free tokens. Ah, you don't want to give us free tokens or do you? So if I crawl I can just double attack Liliana to be honest. That's not a bad play uh, We are not getting the trigger here he has sweepers. I think he might have another Path of Prayer in the hand, but it, sh it shouldn't matter too much. Sir, bro, I need to think what you have in the hand. He ob obviously has a plan and he knows that we can just kill Liliana. He just didn't care. It has to be zombie, right? Alright. If you have a removal, so bad. You earned your kill. Because there is slight chance I might get uh, the Explorer. But you know, oh, we are getting the explorer. All right, I kind of want to kill Liliana. I will just take this full turn fully uh, because I don't want to really lose anything more to her. And two creatures is probably more than he can handle. One is nearly for sure dead. Yep, here it is. Or two of them are dead, we'll see. All right, I mean, that's a heavy commitment. And I mean, our board looks pretty nice. 
Um, I would love to hit a black mana so I can play my black cards, but <laughs> it's not happening, man. It's not happening. And he still saved Liliana even despite two attackers, which was kind of our plan. Our opponent drawing second field of ruin. Alright, that hurts. That's not supposed to happen if we hit our lands right, but we hit absolutely the abysmal color draw so far. And now we kind of see everything. I mean, let's do the thing. Like, we know what has to happen. We know what has to happen. I mean, he can do it later, like, it, it won't make a difference. Sure. I don't need the mana, so we are just going with it. Uh, it pressures their lands a little bit. It also gives us a normal swamp, so we can, you know... Oh, now we are getting flooded, I feel. Alright. Alright. So... Uh, well, this is kind of obvious, right? And we are trashing, trying to push them. Oh, the famous Orzov. <laughs> I wonder if they play one for Field of Ruins. Let's see, it's all about those top decks. And this is not a top deck he really wanted. So he will go with Field of Ruin. Hmm. If he draws a land, he can go Path of Prairie. I don't see any reason to activate the Reef, really. We can activate it later, when he tries to tap out, for example, for Virtue. That's a lot of damage, 7 damage. That's why we want the double Headless Rider. Sure. Of course, when we activate it, he goes with Field of Ruin again. Uh, he will probably do it at the end step. And I mean, he has one draw to win this game. And even like hitting like Liliana or something won't help, sure. Uh, because uh, she cannot target, we can just make 8-8 uh, eight, eight in board to in total. Let's go for the black. And see what happens. I mean, I think he will probably play Virtue. Yep, and we are fully prepared. And let's show our opponent that it wasn't close. He will be able to, you know, go for the thing, but now we have a counter spell. That means... Oh, I'm so tempted to just not attack and give him one more turn. Because whatever he plays, we just flash this, sacrifice this, and we counter it for even better lethal. So, I mean, that was pretty nice overall. Alright, guys, we need to go hard with this one. And I think we have the tools for it. Alright. I don't think we'll get punished. Let's not show that we are Dimir yet. I don't think it makes huge difference, but it makes even less difference, you know, uh, to play like this. Alright, this will be interesting. Alright, so a burn spell. Spell pierce might be insane here. So if we want to play the boat, what is the net? So this is play with fire then step. I think we attack first and we go for the boat, because they cannot kill it. Go for it. Like, normal, normal control decks will never do it. But when this is mono red, you know they will play absolutely <laughs> interesting. Interesting is the word that I will be using. Uh, do we go with this to negate their 2-drop? It kinda works. It kinda works. I normally... I didn't really plan to do it. We had full control mode. And they will swing, right? Because they have the, the their favorite card that allows them to never think about attacking. Yep, here is the card. Still, that is a lot of damage, but that's kinda it, bro. You know? And let's go for the boat while, while having spell pierce. So the next turn is Godric. So this will be nice counter. I mean, I could attack, but I probably want to be a little bit defensive. If they go with something like Lightning Strike, which really hits the spot here, uh, we will spell pierce. One damage a turn is not perfect. Oh, now you want to do it? Sure. Show me! Do you have new trick or is that the same? Oh man, they're... Like, I, I'll be honest. Monorad players play so predictable. They never, like, make any, you know, extra things. Sure. Like, it's always like, yeah, I attack, I play Monster Strange or a Baron Spell. That's it. Every time it's just, just this. Truth to be told, they don't have much options, like the deck plays itself. Uh, so, if we go with this, this is pretty okay. 
All right, so they don't have Kumano, so we kind of get good trades here. I would love to start attacking a little bit. I would really like to start being aggressive, especially that we can get some extra cards, maybe. So what is our out here? Hmm. I think we're, we start to attack. And we go like this, because this trades very, very well. Uh, I mean the Headless Rider. Alright, we are getting some value already. Not the counter, but at least we get better draws for the future turns. That's it, let's it. Uh, the zombie won't be able to block the Swift Spear. It seems they might have another Monstrous Rage. Alright, so dead. Show me, do you have even more? Oh, they are out of Monstrous Rages. Oh, is that the time for Fur Magic? Uh, I actually have two basics, right? That's how it worked. Beginning of each player upkeep deals two damage, two or more basic lands. Alright. Still a 3 3 with mana, so nothing to scoff at. We avoid the damage because we are good at magic. Alright, this is crew one, right? I think we now start to have some attacking potential. We need to be careful about attacks because we can die very quickly. However,. However, we kill him also very, very quickly. And we also got a token. Uh, this isn't a bad card, honestly. It's not the best card I could get, but it's, it's decent, I think. Oh, they're trading. That's, I never expected them to trade. Alright, sure. So right now I have a blocker and I have probably a deadly attack on the next turn. So I wonder how he wins. Okay. Play the same thing again. Expect different results. I have a definition for that one. All right. And I think we're pretty decent, man. Are we beating one <laughs> right? <laughs> With our cool zombies? It seems like it so far. All right. I actually will play this. Non-token zombie, alright, it's important. Can I go for the leaf already? Like, they have no power in the board, I can just full smog them. So, I want... Oh, but... I probably don't want to give them Jadar, right? And this one will die? Alright, I think we just full swing, man. We just full swing. And you know what? If we full swing, we swing like a monoret. Without counting. <laughs> All right, they can only get one good trade. Uh, that's probably not the card we really want right now. It's better than the land, but it's worse against anything else. Did they just die without counting? And this is an, your average mythic monoret player. They, they didn't even count the down. I think they were still dead, but it's fine. All right, man. I tell you, this is I checked. This is my fifth game in a row on the draw. So, <laughs> how we are even winning? All right, let's go like this. Oh, against control. I don't, like, we are, we are probably getting overflooded right now. Uh, how can we approach this? How can we approach it? Ah, oh, they will counter it. I mean, it's just a matter, like, we, we just compare opening hands. There is no decisions. We keep playing creatures and we see if they can play enough removal counter spells. I don't think we can kill them. We have too many lands and they're on the play. Invasion of Dominaria. But we will see, of course. You know, sometimes miracles happen. And let's go what? Probably this guy. Like, he needs to whiff, whiff ha so hard as we, we are right now. And I'm not sure if he will. Alright, uh, this is the, that, and we go like this. Alright, that's it. So they have a removal, it could be White March. It's not Smite, it's uh, not Counterspell. It I didn't, and they didn't use it at Dance Step, so maybe Sword Partition, but I, I feel it's mostly either Get Lost or White March. And most, you know, most control decks play a lot of Marches right now, so I think that's the card. We'll see. Nah, 
3 damage. You are only at 21 on turn 5. Here she is. Alright. So, not very good. Not very good. I think we take this, this loss. Emperor is just always great. And that means we will try to go for a little bit mo more board. But you can see that we absolutely don't have this tempo that we need because we didn't care about it all and we are on the draw. So this then control deck will always get to a stage where he can actually use his cards fully. And his cards absolutely crash and aggro cards because one card can be equal to your whole, you know, hand basically. As on top of, oh my god, like we are... Man, like the flute is real. Seven cards, so out of 13 cards, over 50% are lands. Man, that's disastrous. On top of really bad hand as well. Yeah, I don't think we can make it work at all. It's interesting they have this, uh, but they don't seem to be playing creatures. So I think we'll start losing stuff. We probably lose this for March, and then he sunfalls the rest, and then we scoop. That's uh, That's basically the plan. I'm still going for the play, but I absolutely don't think it will work. Yeah, I don't think meaning makes any sense. We might hit Memordurge, it's fine. Alright, so he plays a lot of basics, I guess. Weird build. Sure. It feels like a creature build, but he has no creatures. Alright, so that was the card he was waiting for. And he really tries to save the Emperor, which kind of makes sense, I guess. We cannot sacrifice it, because it doesn't exist. So that's pretty cool. That's probably the first time I had zombie attacking twice in, in the history of magic. And at least the tokens aren't a problem. So, to be fair, right now he's not having very optimized build. Like, this makes no sense in this kind of deck. And their cardo instead of memory douche is first for discovery. So they have pretty low value for a control deck. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure if that's enough to, you know, with... We really need to push it. Okay, no reaction, that's important. That means no instance. Hopefully. We will see. Alright, let's go. Creatures aren't dying, which is already weird. Um, do you think he plays Memory Deluge? I honestly will mean myself. Also, he might play the Jace. Oh, Smite. But Smite hits only this, right? And that means we get good target for go for the throat again. Yeah, so our opponent is playing extremely low value control deck that can get beaten by a bad draw of zombies. But I'm not sure if we can... Hmm. Like, Smites are fine, but this... I mean, this is some piece of his combo in the deck, but the problem is that it doesn't work with like 80% of your cards. And sometimes you don't have luxury to draw the perfect combination of cards. See, this is the first good card he played, and this this is a first huge problem for us. Maybe he slacked enough that we can still win, but I'm not sure, man. I'm not sure. I don't even have good target to sacrifice right now. We definitely need to kill this. No priority, that's huge. So we need to keep hitting his face while we can. Smites won't do it, right? Uh, he has memory doors, so we can, you know, go for more. Down to five. Oh man. Imagine, if we had better draw at the early game, he would be dead by now. He's forced to play Sandforce, man. And he has this one lone token. But it might be enough. We don't really have great plays right now. We basically need to hit uh, the reef. And now uh, it's a token. We don't know if that's anything else. I mean, if they hit Jace, they already get the value. If they hit Memorders, they already can chain the value. So I, I guess let's mill them. It shows me more of their deck, so I kind of like it. Yep. I will sacrifice it. Uh, I don't think we're close to double activation, right? I mean, if we draw and tap plant maybe for the next turn and we are doing two cards, maybe. Man, if we can win this with this draw, that's actually insane. Jingi Texas. Alright, that's something I can respect. Four mana. Uh, seven cards in the end, sure. 
I mean, I can kill it if I really want to, but I'm not sure if I do. Let's see the card. The boat. This is a very cheap removal, right? Yeah, that's definitely what we are doing. I could go for invasion, but I don't don't forget I need to pay mana for my creatures basic. Oh no, am I mana short? Well, that wasn't perfectly calculated. So how do we go about it? Uh, we definitely go with Amalgam then. Because that's something I, I wanted from a start. That was the plan, guys. <laughs> Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Uh, so they're in some trouble because they whiffed so long. And I tell you, this card cost them the game. I think this is a part of Jingi Taxis combo, right? When someone uh, targets their creatures, they you know, go for this cool play. I can kill it, and they have one card in the end. I will go for Invasion. Probably. They might try to save it with some, you know, crazy magic. But I will still do it. Like, it forces their last card, and they cannot cast my murder, so it's, it's this. That's it. So what's the trick? The trick is to die. Alright, that's, that's a good one. Uh, let's go for the kill, I guess. We need to keep them pressured. Uh, the, the tap plant is a little bit unfortunate at this stage of the game. Oh, that's a removal. I see, I see. I see, I see. We could counter it, but I don't think it's worth it. So instead, we take the mana. Uh, we will be short on lands, which is a little bit awkward. We have two ways to go about it. Either we draw a card, like, uh, wait, 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 four, five, so we... Let's count the mana. I cannot make more blunders. So I will have this for activation. I have one, two, three, and potentially... Yeah, okay, okay, I, I cannot activate them. If I play this and they whiff, four, seven... I kinda win, but they want to hit March. I didn't see a single one so far. They have Smites, but not March. The boat isn't great, man. Alright, let's go for it. Let's go for it. And let's play the land. We need those lands for sure. I mean, it's all about those draws right now. The seven mana Jingi Texas. Is that good enough? I think it might not be. We definitely attack, so he still needs to sacrifice it. He didn't really accomplish too much. And I mean, we check. If we draw, go for the throat, it doesn't change anything, really. I don't think there's anything that changes things. Don't forget our stuff has death touch, and now he's in way worse situation. I will still mean myself. I don't want to risk giving him an extra value. Like, he doesn't play Fateful Mending, but, you know, who knows. So he will still lose it. He has no protection spells. You know, to be fair, like, his deck is pretty cool, and I like the idea, but, yeah, it's... Probably more Sun Forces needed, if you go this kind of style. Alright, so, what do we go for? And uh, the boat. Because it gives everything haste. And I think he will die. Yep. The last play before you concede. So yeah, honestly, a very cool deck, but it's it's unfortunately not very working right now. Even, you know, we are playing zombies. Imagine if that was Boros on the play with a perfect combo. Like, no, no shot, man. And White March is really helping with this kind of build. Alright, another win. All right, opponent goes first. What's up with the hand? It's not bad. Uh, being on the draw is bad. Man, I think I'm like third game in a row on the draw. I would love to be on the play sometimes. <laughs> Especially with this kind of aggressive creature deck. Being on the play basically gives you extra 30% win rate by default. And that's not a joke. I actually checked stats for some of the aggro decks I was playing. And on the play, they have like 80% win rate. And on the draw, they have like... 48% win, right? So, I mean, it's third, what? 
math hard. 32% win rate difference based on being on the player on the draw. Makes sense. <laughs> Makes sense. So that's how you always hear it. Oh no, I'm on the draw. Because this is a huge disadvantage already. Uh, so they decided it's worth this. Uh, it's worth to go like this. Hmm. That suggests they have more plays. So how can I approach it? Oh man, man that, that would be harsh. Oh, I don't want to take this kind of damage. I really think we should trade. It's a lot of damage. They will get a card. They will play a land and probably an next creature. But it's not like we can just ignore, you know, so much damage every turn. They got very good value from this, to be fair. And that is insanely good draw. That is honestly really, really good draw. You know, two drop is also good, but this, this does get, keeps us going, basically. All right. Goosey Goose. Kumana. We can, in response, sacrifice our creature, I guess. All right. So next turn should be a creature. And uh, let's go for the bloom. Oh, man. We can kill it later, right? <laughs> Famous last words, man. I will be aggressive. Even though I'm losing on life, uh, I have more board. And I need to punish him before he recovers. The next turn will be huge. Uh, this is pretty, you know... Not perfect that we are uh, we cannot kill it, but the rider was just such a great play here. All right, I mean I'm not. Uh, oh, okay, it's not flipped. I don't think they get the full interaction. When this dies, it creates a zombie and it buffs this, so my attack is even better, more powerful than you ever imagined. And right now we are starting to win. And I can sacrifice this and get my counter spell for free. Or just kill stuff for free. Uh, yeah, I think we're in a good spot. Obviously, he's on one land, but come on. He took a one lander. Like, how risky is that? I think we can just ambush him, because he will never see it coming. Easy. Good game. Explosion time. <laughs> Man, we are farming Monoret. Like, no joke. We are just literally farming them right now. You know what? No. Okay, we go for this, because we have go for the fraud, so when they try to pump it next turn, oh boy, they won't like the result. Man, look at this stuff. Honestly, we are just farming them at this point. Yep. Enjoy your last turn. Oh, it grows. It's even better. Even though we traded the first one, look at the second one. That, that was why this was so, so important. How is your one lander, my friend? Ah, uh, still greedy? Generally, even as Monoret, taking one lander is extremely risky, especially that uh, hand smoothing does a lot of work for you, so your opening hand should be kinda what you expect for, expect for most of the game. Uh, hoping you will draw, the, the draws are actually natural, uh, you know, the opening hand is smoothed. Right guys, weirdest opening ever coming through, but we, we want to see how it goes. Oh, on the draw. Okay, I appreciate that they don't try to even play magic correctly and just waste their burn spells, you know, on face instead of seeing if maybe your opponent plays a creature that is a perfect target and one of the reasons that this deck worked because you have removal for their creatures. Of course, you can just play whatever and swing every turn. Yep, hesitation on Feldon that cannot black make makes also a lot of sense. However, we'll try to overpower them. I'm not sure if we can. Don't forget they are on the play, so the most aggressive deck in the meta, on the play. Can we race it? <laughs> we will see. Uh, he misplayed already, and that gave us some extra edge that we never should have. So, you know, it's kind of constant. The, the stronger the deck is, the, you know, the more room for learning the player that uses it has. Alright, that was the correct way to say it. All right, so what do we go for? I mean, we can trade heavily. We cannot uh, be aggressive right now. We need to go with the trading. And we need to give him a lot of cards, which sucks. But what can you do, man? Uh, so we will try to just keep trading, I guess. I can deal 5 damage, but then I kind of die, right? I can trade here. So I'm getting hit for at least 4 yeah, man, I think we just go for the next turn and double play those spells, and then maybe we can attack a little bit. Maybe I could make for a lethal? Maybe I maybe I should go for the lethal, I don't know, man. Alright. Alright. Full hand empty. You can full swing. Why only one creature? What's going on, bro? 
All right. So, ordering. Slow ordering. I mean, this card is no joke. No joke. And man, they... How do you scoop to this? And they didn't even try. All right. I guess we are absolutely owning Monoret. All right, guys. And this is one of the hands that will remind you that you need to take Mulligans from time to time. <laughs> that was a full-blown disaster, man. And honestly, I... Oh, spell Pierce can be so good. I want all of those cards. Can I please get all of them? We definitely need those two. Spellbeers can be game deciding. If we're against creature deck, go for the throat will be deciding. Let's risk it. Just because we have a second go for the throat. If I had one, I would probably get rid of Spellbeers. All right, it seems that that was kind of a fine choice. All right. All right, the next turn will be basically all of our value. So by turn two, we will be out of cards, basically. <laughs> and we are getting flooded on top of this. Perfect. This is how I like it. All right. I mean, we need to keep drawing zombies. Uh, Spell Pierce is insanely good. And so is Go for the Throat. I mean, man, I, I never understand mono blue players playing so aggressively. Like, this is such a risk. Oh, they're playing the... Yeah, 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 their animator version, right? Yeah, so they will probably reanimate it for one mana on the next turn. Uh, we can, cannot really ignore it. So we kind of hope we can get them with Spellpier somewhere. Oh, sure, they have second one. All right. I see, I see. We still have spell gears. They don't seem to be running counter spells for some reason. Um, they might kill us, but worst case we get a zombie. Alright, some damage goes through. This will be hard, but I hope we can get the you know the big spell with spell gears. They probably don't expect it. Yep. Here it comes. And it wouldn't work if not our abysmal early game hand. So, 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 so. I mean, I think this is a pretty nice trick overall. I think it's a trick. We'll see where when it happens, but I think so. All right. All right. Listen. Listen. <laughs> it's a little bit weird one, but we are going with it. Oh, it's a zombie. What a surprise. Now I have a 4-4 four, four and I draw two cards. Ah, outplayed? Easy. Absolutely easy. That was weird. They didn't have any any way to save this. I think we can go with this. Uh, just because of spell peers. And I want better next turn. Man, can we really beat them? <laughs> Zombies? Are you serious? Man, we are absolutely plowing from Mythic with this one somehow. Alright guys, so I'm kinda excited to talk through this deck, of course the intro was already a bit longer than usual because I couldn't help myself, but there's so much more to unpack here. Uh, one of the things you might realize is that we are playing the boat. Why? Is it a zombie boat? It can be, it can be basically parts of the Caribbean. However, however, uh, it's extremely st strong card that gives you either a cardo or a buff on your creatures and it gives basically haste something zombies never have uh, haste is huge right now in in the meta because it allows you to sneak this extra damage and especially if you go with cards like well it's not strictly haste but you get the idea you grow your creatures you grow your board and you attack them for extra amount and everyone is just playing against what they see right if they need to incorporate three extra damage every turn potentially it's scary and you have a lot of ways to get some cool tokens for example Jadar uh, normally when you attack you lose the token of course here you can actually use this token to crew you can use Jadar to crew and you only lose one one that you never wanted to block with anyway because it's not a good blocker it's your value card that you want to keep for a long game so you know there is a lot of cool interactions with uh, the boat and I think it's worth it in this deck it also is a great blocker against Monarch if you play this on 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 the play 
and then you just keep growing it, they cannot really go through it and it's so hard to kill it. Like even for a control deck, it's so annoying. You play one zombie, they kill it and they still get hit by by, by the boat basically. Uh, so Headless Rider is probably a big powerhouse for the card. To be honest, I, I actually never got the value from, from this guy. Like it looks great on paper, it hit, hits pretty hard, but I never used the ability, man. However, the Headless Rider was one of the powerhouses that really carried a lot of games, especially that it's not legendary. So if you combine a few of them, you can create value out of nothing. When you sacrifice a zombie, you basically get a new zombie and it can be triple zombies if you have three of those. That's why you have conviction. Worst case, you can even go for the end step play. When you go for the throat, your own zombie, because that will create more damage on the next turn. This can be used against control decks because this is a dead card. And imagine if this card named, you duplicate one of your zombies. Like it's a pretty decent card for control matchup, right? And that's what it can do in some cases. Uh, Invasion of Innistadt seemed like a great idea, but I have found that it's hard to basically find a room to waste five damage. But I think it could be because my draws very often weren't really great. I, I, I don't think I ever curved like perfectly up to turn four or something. So I probably was usually behind, so I couldn't get more behind. I fought for just this little edge and having it as a removal is good enough it can kill anything sure that attracts a, this is one of the reasons we can a little bit skip on the go for the throats and go harder on the early game as well and it still gives you potential to fight if you meet any kind of mid-range deck um, then it's not super important who who races first you know you can just fight until one of you has zero cards and the guy with two cards wins basically and this is what it does especially that it can create creatures out of nowhere it's also i think the only way you can exile creatures from the graveyard so you know sometimes it will be meaningful and yeah uh, with the reef it's even easier to flip it so even on the empty board sometimes you just activate the reef hit this twice and you get the value, potentially game-winning value. So a lot of cool tricks, but probably my favorite one and the reason we really went for Demir, outside of this cap, which is a great, like, <laughs> you know, finisher, man, this deals so much damage you don't realize. Like, it's, it's just five, six extra damage very often because you have so many zombies with those tokens. And also this gives very nice synergy with Jadar, right? Because your token is suddenly 3-2 and it's really hard to block overall and nobody wants to sacrifice any real creature to this. So yeah, pretty good stuff. But Spell Pierce and Amalgam, man, those cards always get them. I originally thought about Make Disappear, but look at the card, it's just, it's not perfect. I didn't want to overdo it with two drops, so it just felt right and Honestly, we mostly want to get rid of removal spells and sweepers. Those are the two types of cards that really destroy our deck. And when you counter Sunfall, you are nearly guaranteed to win on the next turn, which is what usually happens. And with Amalgam, you have this hard counter potential and also extra damage. And also it's a zombie. So if you have any kind of uh, Champions of the Parish in the board, if you have Headless Rider, you can play it, sacrifice whatever and not even counter anything and you will grow those, you will make all the tokens and suddenly your opponent prepared for like 8 damage or 10 damage and it's 17. You know, and he's dead. And very often this is how you win the games. So the deck has a lot more trickiness than you expect from a zombie deck. It's not as straightforward as you can see. And don't forget you can use Corrupted Conviction to just sacrifice the target for removal because they will probably want to kill Champion of the Perished, you know, Jadar. This kind of stuff really has to die most of the time. And they will target it. If you leave this one mana, especially if it's like Demir mana, so you can either counter it or just sacrifice if that's beneficial to you and they wasted removal you get two new spells and it, it's it's worth rotating zombies because cards like this and this grow you get tokens you get plus one counters and you just want to play more zombies it's fine so yeah pretty cool stuff i overall really enjoyed it more than i expected to be honest i thought it would be disaster but it performed man so much better than i expected and it was pretty fun i wish we had better zombies and more zombies so this could be kind of meta deck maybe we can make it work we'll see probably to be fair i probably got some lucky streak maybe my opponents misplayed but i still enjoy the result six one is no joke in my fix so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it and yeah thank you for watching as always i hope you had a great fun with some cool zombies in the meta and see you tomorrow